बुझू रहा है Hello there. Um, can you guys turn on your camera? Okay. So now we are live on Facebook. I think we could start. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the sixth episode of our Knowledge Fishing online talk show. My name is Connie Ling. I will be your moderator today. Um, today we have our guest. Uh, today our guest speaker will tell us about the innovation in healthcare industry that have a significant impact on the population well-being and economy in each of their countries. Um, welcome, Dr. Israel Yingting from Myanmar and Dr. Sayafik Sohili from Indonesia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, how are you guys doing? I'm good. Hello, Ling. I'm, I'm good too. So did I did I spell your name right? Mm. Uh, my name is for me Dr. yes. Uh, my name is Doctor Shafiq. Shafiq. Maybe your spelling is diff is different from Indonesian. No? Shafiq. Yeah. Shafiq. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Apologies. No problem. All right. So uh, I would like to start by asking. Uh, what is the common surgery process in your, in each of your country? Uh, anyone can volunteer to start first. Okay, I'll start. Uh, the common surgery process in my country, uh, the surgical processes that are often performed in Indonesia, such as cataract surgery, cesarean section, appendectomy, and fracture surgery. And I think it's the common procedure. So what I understand from the question is that you want the surgery process from the beginning to the like post-surgery process. Is, is that right? Yeah, that all the common surgery that your country have. Mm, okay. Um, okay, so, so I have to say um, they can be categorized into the uh, private hospital process and the government hospital process. For the government hospital process, um, so when the when um, patients come in, they have to divide it into their respective department, like for example, medical, uh, medicine department or surgery department or like other you know pediatric child departments, and then when they are divided there, and then um, mostly the junior medical doctors have to see the patient first, and then when that patient seem to need a surgery, um, okay, let's say em emergency surgery, then they have to contact the senior doctors immediately and then run the, all the required tests for the, um, for the operation. We call it a like pre-test. And then, and then um, um, they have to call their senior doctors and then inform, you know, um, inform the, the operation theaters, nurse, and, and there should be some um, nurses in charge of the theaters, you know, in and out. So they have to inform there. And then and then just before the operation, the senior doctors who are gonna in, uh, perform the surgery visited, uh, visit the patients and see, you know, um, himself, like what's, is that really a case needed to do surgery or not? And um, okay, to say in short, um, then yeah, uh, for the, for the other non-emergency surgery, then 
yeah, the the same process, but it's they have to, they don't have to inform their senior doctors like immediately. They can just like take the doc, take the patients in the hospital register, and then maybe another day in the morning, the senior doctors um gonna go around the ward. We call it like yeah, going around ward and then like seeing each patient, and then um. Uh, in terms of many things, like they're gonna put in the list of the operation. Sometimes you have to wait like for a long time um, uh, to uh, to receive the surgery. So after the surgery is um, and it's uh, just usually um, the the patients are sent to the ward again, and then they have they have to stay like for a few days, and then they get discharged. And after that, uh, the patients. Um, they they have their date um, to come again in at their like at the at, at their dis, um, discharge certificate. So so that's like yeah general process of the surgery. Okay. Um, and what type of surgery most people usually get in your country? Can, can you ask the question again? Yeah, for example, um, from my understanding, um, India has a lot of uh, heart surgery, right? If, um, say, remember what type of surgery most people usually have? In Myanmar, in I would say that the surgery, um, mostly the, in, in the government sector, I think I think it, it depends. Um, I don't know which would be the the most common uh, surgery process. Um, I would say the the first one would be cancer. I would say, can uh, like breast cancer for example, and then stomach cancer is also common. And the second one would be and the the patients with the injury from the road traffic accidents, because. Um, is this, especially in like in the in a festival seasons and people travel a lot and yeah so i would say like cancer and the road traffic accidents surgery. is it the same case for indonesia too i think in indonesia surgical procedures uh i tell you about the the common procedure like in cataract surgery, it's a certain section of anatomy, fracture surgery, and uh, I think operation for cancer is to uh, common surgery procedure in Indonesia, and but I think cataract is number one. Mm, I see. Uh, do you guys have? Um, uh, do you guys offer? free health care for the citizen in your country? Can you tell me again the question? Please? Oh, yeah. like, is health care free in your country? Mm, okay, in Indonesia, almost all procedures ranging from consultation, examination, drug management, and surgical procedures can be obtained free of charge. They can be acquired by participating in the state insurance service, namely BPGS Kesehatan. Now, so by paying this every month or monthly premiums, people will not have to expend money on healthcare service when they get sick for both acute or chronic disease. Mm -hmm. Now, people that are classified as financial uncapable can be registered by the government to get the insurance benefit without having to pay monthly premiums. Now, procedures that cannot be claimed through the insurance include aesthetic-related procedures such as acne treatment and body shape improvement procedures. Uh, this is uh, from Indonesia, Ling. Uh, so, so you guys have a system where people pay monthly as a premium yeah. to get free. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How much do they usually have to pay for the premium? Okay, the premiums in Indonesia there is three class, and the price is uh 
like at the fifty fifty thousand from start from fifty thousand rupees, one hundred thousand rupees, and one hundred and fifty thousand rupees. So there's three three uh three insurance in Indonesia, but if they if they don't have uh, money or in in financially uncapable, nah, uh, the government will the government will uh, give the insurance insurance free from them. So uh, not all people in Indonesia will pay the insurance. Do you, can you hear? Yeah. Yes, I can hear. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That's interesting. Uh, how about Myanmar? Um, yeah. yeah, actually, this is like a very big question. <laughs> and I am just, I'm just graduated last year. And so I'm like a very junior, junior medical doctors. Like, you know, there's no doctors under us who are graduated. So, um, so I cannot really tell, you know, everything about the healthcare system is, is free or not, you know, but um, uh, but from my point of view, like as I um, during my school, uh, university years and you know after I graduated, I I'm, I'm we have we have to do one year of internship and we called it house surgeon, um, the practical part after the you know um, the academic classroom things. Um, so uh, from that experience and also like from some experiences of me uh, working as a, as a medical doctor at, uh, at a private hospital. I, um, I would say that the, you know, the government claimed that the health care service is free in Myanmar, but, but it's free in conditions. Um, uh, what I mean is that, it, so when the patients come in, um, everything seems to be free and they also have some kind of like statements on some kind of posters with uh, mentioning that you know a healthcare system is free but actually it's not it's not free it's free only if the you know required products are available in the hospital for example if you have to get some antibiotics and they have the antibiotics like supplied by the government then it's free and um, some procedures are also free if they have it for example if the hospital has MRI machine, then MRI is going to be free. And if they have the X-ray machines, the X-ray is going to be free. Um, but, um, but those kind of procedures, uh, they have a long waiting list. So if you want to get it free, you have to wait for like sometimes two or three months. And so it's also a long process. And um, yeah, um, uh, but what one thing that is completely free is the, the charge of the specialists, uh, doctors and nurses. You, you don't have to pay for the doctors, the nurses, and you know, other like ju junior doctors like us who have to be in charge of the injection, you know, other things, other basic things. And you don't have to pay for the room rent also. Um, but for the room rent, they have some special rooms. So if you want to get in that special individual room, you have to uh, pay for it. Um, but if you don't if you don't have like enough money for the room then you can just but then you have to share it with other people at the like big hall you know some many beds individual beds but in the same hall um we also have like some blood tests for free but also like you have to wait like sometimes a long time for the blood test so if the doctors think it is an it is an urgent to have it is an it is urgent to have the blood test done then um, one process in our country is that the, the doctors will explain the patients and the patient's attendance that you know and the, this blood tests are really urgent it has to be done very quickly so um, <clears throat> and ask the patients that if they would like to get their test done in the private lab outside the hospital um, they charge more, uh, the, um, they charge like, you know, the, um, they charge the true, you know, cost. And then if the patient attendants are also, um, also okay with that, then, you know, they will, uh, the, the procedure is that, 
the doctors will call some private labs and then people from the private labs come and then get the you um, get the blood from the patients and that process really quick you can have your results back um, sometime in the same day but for the hospitals um, the, the free service the free blood test you have to wait for sometimes for a week and so most people it, who can afford to um, go with a, a private lab and you know some blood tests are not available in the hospital so at that time they have to get their blood test done in the private lab but sometimes um, the private lab doesn't the private labs um, do not have their do not have some special tests but the hospital does so then you have to wait wait for for the test to be done um, but for some tests in in my country, uh, in, in the in the government hospital, um, in the public hospital, um, the same, um, they they still charge some money, but not very expensive. So you still have to pay for for that. And for the like, you know, there are a lot to talk about this, but uh, I will just pick up some examples. And another example is the surgery process. You don't have to pay to surgeon. You don't have to pay for the room. You know, you don't have to pay for other, other, you know, um, additional services like, you know, there are some walkers who take you from the bed to the uh, operation theaters, and you know, there, there are also some cleaners like, you know, who help you clean everything. You know, the body fluid from your body, and you know, other like urine, you know, such things. You don't have to pay for them, um, but but you still have to buy some instruments if if that if that are required in the process so that the hospitals will not provide you the require you know instruments or you know for example like if you have to put like a chest tube the if the hospital is is you know is not supplying that equipment that you have to buy so it's it, it so it depends and you know, it's, it's in, interesting to know that the Indonesia hospitals are using the premium um, gar, gar, uh, insurance things. But I think uh, um, regarding that, in our country, uh, there are some private insurance in health, I think, especially they are like joined with the um, very, you know, fancy, expensive private hospital. But for the government hospital part, they, they don't have that. I think that is because of the, the the poor economy of our country as well. So like most of the people here are poor. It is very obvious. Um, they are like struggling with every day. You know how would they have extra money for the you know insurance? So we don't we don't have that right now. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of things to talk. You know. Um, but well, one last thing I would like to mention is that sometimes they depend on donors. Um, donors can be individual donors or like from the charity groups. So like um, we literally have to call the charity organizations, you know, if they want to help this particular patient, we have to explain to them like this patient, this patient come from a very far place because their their hometowns and uh, doesn't their hometown doesn't have a, a, a hospital or like and a good hospital so they have to like travel a lot we have to explain everything to the charity group we call them and then if they agree they they you know they share some some cost or then if the cost is not like still fully available uh, i mean um you know sometimes the charity group is gonna help the patient but not fully mm -hmm. just to their extent you know so at that time we have to call like, another charity and then we have yeah and sometimes Sometimes the hospital also has their like private fund. Um, the fund it's um, the fund is just the pool of money collected from the from the patient. So so um, when a patient is dis discharged from the hospital, we ask the patient if they want to make some donation to the hospital. So we don't charge money, but it depends on them if they want to donate like some money. Uh, you know, any amount of them they can donate. So we have that kind of funding. So sometimes we use that money for some patients, um, and for like some kind of um, 
special department, for example, cardiology department. So in, in, in Myanmar, um, cardiology departments are only mostly available only in the government hospital. So like if you cannot go to other countries, you have to go to the government hospital. So there are also some very rich people there, you know, receiving the treatment because they cannot have that treatment in private hospital. So mostly people wouldn't go to the government hospital if they are rich, but like they have to go to the government hospital for their heart, for their brain, because the private hospital do not have uh, departments for like brain or, you know, heart. So they make a lot of contribution back after they get discharged. So in that in that way, uh, you know, it's the, the hospital also have some kind of like individual funding uh, to use for the patients. Mm, I see. So it's a like complicated process in Myanmar. Very complicated. Yes. And whereas in Indonesia, you just have the premium insurance and everything will be covered, which is a lot easier, right? <laughs> yeah, I think just yeah. some procedure that can be claimed like uh, aesthetic procedures that plastic surgery or acnetic treatment and etc mm -hmm. what would uh, what what kind of treatment is the most expensive in your country Some of the procedures that are classified as extensive in Indonesia in our country are this related, I think, in neurosurgery and plastic surgery, surgery, plastic surgery. Uh, this is maybe because the procedures rela related to this field require special tools. And in Indonesia, neurosurgeons and plastic surgeons are still limited. Uh, in addition, uh, chronic Disease such like as chronic kidney disease and cancer also require expensive funds because the treatment of this disease, you know, requires long-term therapy using drugs, surgery, and other medical procedures. I think it's the uh, this is uh, what in expensive category in our country. Ah, uh, I see. Do you think many people get try to get plastic surgery in your country since it's mm. very expensive? In Indonesia, uh, plastic surgery is is developing is developing in this era, but maybe it's not too high level in like Korean. But I think in maybe in ten thousand in two thousand and thirty, the plastic surgery procedures will be ordinary in my country. But now the it's still mm, Limit. not mm. limited. Yeah. Okay, and the and the plastic surgeon is some profession that limited to in my country, but the trend is more developed. Yeah. Developed, uh, yeah. What about in Myanmar? What is like the most expensive surgery to get? I I think um um it is interesting to know that you know plastic surgery is like one of the most expensive procedure in Indonesia, and then you know. I come to think of, and I think it's also the same here, like the, you know, aesthetic things are expensive, you know, even like you have to do some kind of minor eyelid, double eyelid surgery or something that is very expensive. But um, because I think like Myanmar is still a very developing country. So I think only like people who can afford for that go for the plastic surgery, I think, you know, when you asked the question, I wasn't even thinking about that aesthetic part. I was thinking about the government hospital mostly because, you know, like more than, like, I, I would say more, about like 80% of the people uh, go to the public hospital for the treatment because they don't have money. They cannot afford for the private hospital. Um, so regarding, uh, you know, other than the aesthetic things, I would say like heart, heart surgery is, might be the most expensive because yeah, it's, it's a very long process. Like sometimes uh, from my, from what I, from what I have heard, uh, it, it might be not hundred percent true, but sometimes like the operation takes more than a day, more than 24 hours. So like you need a lot of things to, you know, keep on operating the operating theaters, you know, and, you know, heart, 
I, I think they might need like more than one or two sergeants there uh, to perform the operation. So I would, yeah. And sometimes like, you know, the cost of the treatment can also depend on the availability of the, you know, equipment and drugs. So if, if, if there's no such equipment in Myanmar, then they have to order the equipment from other country. Sometimes it takes like a long, um, it takes um, a long time, you know, just to get that uh, necessary equipment. And I think uh, uh, lately Myanmar has also been doing the, uh, the transplant, the transplant surgery. I think they have been doing the kidney transplants, I, I guess. So kidney transplants can also be really ex expensive, uh, I think. So yeah, Indonesia, you have like a neural surgery is the expensive one, right? Another expensive surgery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I ask to Dr. Israel? Yeah. Uh, Indonesia, you know the program of plastic surgeon or neurosurgery. Neurosurgeon is rare. Is maybe we can say it's exclusive. So not all in all not in all university in Indonesia can open the program of plastic surgery and neurosurgery. Uh, is it the same in Myanmar? Um. Yeah. In in. In Myanmar, um, like all the medical universities are operated by the government, so we don't have private medical hospital. So everything, every every um, medical university is under government. So um, to answer your question, I would say that yeah, it's yeah the like the neurosurgery things or you know other like cardiology thing, they all they only exist. They, in in the big cities, I mean, I would say like three big cities. So you have to go to that cities and you know get the treatment in the in the government hospital there. So I would say it's not available everywhere. Mm. Okay. What about in Indonesia? Is it accessible for everyone? Easily available? Uh, I think like Myanmar, it's uh just for some people there are uh it's just in some city in indonesia not every regions in indonesia so you must uh prepare extra for joint plastic surgery surgery or neurosurgeries uh, program because it's so hard to us to get this program for our doctor maybe uh need a prepare before he join the program Mm, I see. Can, can I ask one thing? Um, because I, I have been curious that in, in Indonesia, I, you know, it's, I heard that you have like premium insurance, right? So oh. like, does, does everyone have the insurance or like how much do you have to pay monthly? Is, it, is that depending on your income or like everyone has to pay the same insurance uh, month, uh, monthly or yearly? Okay. I said that uh, the insurance, there are three class. Class one in uh, 50,000 rupees, class two, 100,000 rupees, and class three, 150,000 rupees. And if the people get sick, it will depend on the class insurance. So if the rooms are depends how much he pay the insurance. But if if the people don't have money to pay the insurance, they will be registered by our local government to get the insurance benefits without having to pay monthly dues. So this is the special case for the for the people who don't have money or in financial uncapable to pay the insurance. So I think it's the answer. So 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 but basically everyone has the insurance, right? Yeah. Yeah, for for Indonesia, this is the program who everyone uh, must join this insurance, but it's uh, not yet 100% in Indonesia, but I think uh, every, everyone will join the people 
join the interest because it's the program of government, our government to make 100 people in every region in Indonesia must join the insurance. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good program, I suppose. Uh, another question I would like to ask is, does your country focus on healthcare innovation? I'm the first. Yeah, you can go first. Okay, yes, of course, my country has innovation for, for healthcare. Do I said that BPJS Kesehatan, which is a mandatory insurance for Indonesian citizens, like I said before, we, we are taught to be more alert to disease that we may experience. Yeah. <laughs> Through this program, it is expected or targeted that the entire community will be facilitated, especially regarding cost and administration if they get state. Yeah. yeah. This program also adheres to the principle of Gotong Royong. I said Gotong Royong, it means which to help each other. Jadi Gotong Royong equals in to help each other. Yeah. And this will indirectly make all Indonesian people feel connected to one another. Can you, can you hear? Yeah. Another yeah. program, yeah, okay. The second program that is currently being carried out is the existence of public health center. Now, public health center in Indonesia, it called Puskesmas. Pusat Kesehatan Masyarakat. So, Puskesmas equals health, health community center in Indonesia in each sub-district. So, in each sub-district, there are minimal one health center. Now, this is primary health care center. So, with this, it is expected that health services can reach all people or every single person in all regions of Indonesia. You know, it's Indonesia, there are so many islands, so we need a system who get who, who will give a who will equalization of health, health, health service. Yeah. So with Puskesmas or Heart Community Center, it uh, we can we hope we can give healthcare in all of regions of Indonesia. So that's the one of the innovation Indonesia has been implementing. Uh, uh, what about in like um, other types of uh, treatment process? Like, do you guys try to innovate the treatment process or surgery process? Okay, in Indonesia, uh, the process we're developing like you know uh, maybe like Myanmar is about uh, kidney transplantation or cardiac transplantation it's and stem cell stem cell procedures you know it's the procedure who developing in our country and also uh, in our country is uh, make is uh, developing our herb traditional traditional treatment like you know in my 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 work to my place to work like in indonesian medical army we developing about the sambiloto sambiloto is the traditional herba from indonesia who in research we can use in an as an anti cancer and the other this is treatment yeah. What about in Myanmar? Well, I think there there is very little innovations, I guess. But but I would say like there are like a lot of developments. But I I think we can we I I think we cannot call it like innovation because it's not new because it's not new in other in the world. But for Myanmar, yeah, it's. In Myanmar, you can say it's innovations as well, but I would call it like development. So, um, you know, in the like past 10 years, there has been a lot of developments in the medical system as well. So uh, there are like many new procedures available, for example, like transplants things, and you know, uh, especially like, like kidney transplants. And I have heard that there are also some, a few cases of, um, 
liver transplants as well uh, with with the help of the Medicare team from other countries. And so it's, it's also been a, a big uh, development as well. And, and I think like our, um, the development of our medical system um, greatly depends on the economy and the like politics of the country as well. In recent year, when there was a, um, there was a, a, a there was a government who is interested in doing the uh, doing the, the um, development of the medical system. It has been um, uh, very enormous developments as well, and um, <clears throat> uh, especially because the funding to the medical system uh, was also a lot increased compared to the the past. So. During that time, um, during that time, like the hospital, um, there were more um, available free tests as well, and and the hospitals also received um, some advanced machines like MRI machines or CT machines as well, and the infrastructure has also been uh, developed. And so I, I yeah I would call those development and. There are also some development done individually. For example, like uh, uh, for example, like a medical doctor from the government hospital uh, go uh, goes to other country and receive some trainings, um, mostly short course trainings. And then uh, when he or she comes back to the to Myanmar, then he would do the similar programs, and he would. Uh, he or she would start doing some kind of trainings, you know, that that he or she received uh, from other countries, and then were spread and would give the same what what basically what he or she has learned to other you know fellows doctors, and then they're gonna start a new department um, in the government hospital, and so I I would say that is also like one improvement, and I think. With the funding from other other like international um, associations like EU, there has also been some um, development in, especially in the rural areas. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, new hospitals been built in you know very rural areas, and one improvement is that the the basic salary of medical persons like doctors and nurses. Um, has also been increased. So that's also one development, I would say. Um, yeah, and but from the point of the, from the pharmacy, I think uh, there are not many drugs produced in our country. So we still have to rely on um, drugs and equipment from other countries. So we are still really lack in innovation in those kind of like, I would say medical technology things. We are still really lack of it, um, but unfortunately, you know, there has been a political crisis in Myanmar, uh, starting from last year. So now, you know, um, I I don't know what are some improvement or like you know, um, because most of the hospitals has been closed due to the political crisis, um, as well as the COVID nineteen situation. So I. So I think in the last two years, there are not many uh, improvement in medical society as well. But yeah, but I, I hope that, you know, um, especially like young doctors would go to other countries and, you know, uh, and, and, you know, get some like really advanced trainings and then bring those technology and, you know, trainings back to our country. Can I uh, ask something to Dr. Israel? Yeah. Uh, maybe I want to ask uh, something about education, medical education. So in Indonesia, if if we graduated not from in Indonesia, we cannot uh, work as a medical doctor in Indonesia. So we must join the additional education for to work in Indonesia. Is it the same in Myanmar? So you mean if they graduated from abroad, right? As a medical. Uh, yeah. Ah. 
medical doctor, we must um, join the additional before we work in Indonesia. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I also think that like if you want to be a doctor in Myanmar, then you have you have to have the license, right? So you have to take some like exam. But uh, but um, honestly, like if if someone is graduated in other countries, I don't think they would want to come to Myanmar to to work as a as a doctor here. But there are some some I have heard that there are some doctors who are graduated in China and then they come to Myanmar to work. I think they have to. I think they just have to take an an ex exam. Wow. Um, but I think uh, the language proficiency is also required because uh, you have to work in the, especially if you want to work in the government hospital. But I think for the private hospital, I think you don't really need to take the exams if you, if you, if you have the like bachelor or master degrees in the very you know, very um um recognized universities you can just work in the private hospitals i think it's it's uh, different a little bit different from indonesia so i'll share if someone graduated from another another country we must join the additional not just not just examination we we must join the additional education so if uh, example uh, she or he is a surgeon. Uh, there's in Indonesia need five years to be to become a surgeon. So uh, she or he must join the education half from five years ah. to become a surgeon in Indonesia. It's the reality in Indonesia. Uh, so no matter where you graduated, if you want to be a doctor in Indonesia, ah. you have to study again in Indonesia. Yeah. It's wow. yeah. It makes the situation more complicated in Indonesia. Yeah, so it's like it takes a long time to become a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Place. Yeah. Um. So, are are there many people coming from other countries studying the medicine in in Indonesia? Are there many? Like, are are there many? Uh, many medical students or doctors coming from other countries studying in Indonesia? I, I think I think it's not uh, it's rare because you know the education the education program will be longer. Yeah, but some my friends uh, back to Indonesia maybe because their family or etc. But uh, most of them uh, choose to work in the other country because it's uh, maybe it's more it's easier than we then they back to Indonesia to work as a practitioner yeah thank you yeah so does Indonesia um, medical university accept foreigner to study or not yeah, I think some university in Indonesia, maybe three or four university in Indonesia, accept the people from the other country to study in there. But I don't know if the if the if the if they go back to their country, they must join the additional education or not. But Indonesia, I know, accept some students from the other country. Mm. Yeah. I think in Myanmar, so like, right? <laughs> in, in yeah, in Myanmar, no, I guess. I think yeah, that's why I, I'm that's why I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm um um I like which which language do you use as a median in the medical universities? And another question is that mostly from which countries um um do students come from to study in in Indonesia? Uh, okay. Maybe especially in my university, you know, we still use Indonesian language or bahasa, but in for the matter, for the for the uh, our our university use use English in our uh, presentation or in 
our examination but in but in uh, some university who accept the the student from the other country they use uh, english english uh, for full activity so uh, maybe in the university who accept this student from the other country they have a uh, two two class one of next one is a uh, is for national class and two is international class. So if they come to the other country, they will be joining the international class, I know, international class, and they will use English school. So in international school, there is the student in, in from Indonesia and the student uh, from the other country. Which country is it? Like the student? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Maybe most of students uh, in Asia is from Asia, like I know it's Malaysia, Thailand, and India. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So. I, I see. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> let me ask another question. Um, uh, in Myanmar, like in Myanmar, the government has a more, uh, um, like every like all of the teaching hospitals are you know a government hospital because we don't have private medical universities um so like so as i as i like explained a little bit before the healthcare system is set to be free right so the the patients um the patients do not have to give money for the doctors and nurses so in in return like doctors for example uh, especially like medical students have the chance to you know to study the patients um and, and to talk with the patients and you know to learn um from to learn using the patients right using the pa uh, patients but I, I have heard that in other countries like it is not possible to communicate with you know any patients in the hospital you have to pay for uh, you have to pay to the patients, you know, um, to let to let themselves examine you. Um, but in in Myanmar, like uh, because the healthcare system is free, the patients or uh, we don't have to pay money to the patients as well. So that is why, like, uh, um, that is why we don't have the private um, uh, private medical university. So uh, what I want to ask is that when you do the practical things, practical learning things in the Indonesian um, uh, Indonesian medical university, do you also use patients, real people, and like if you use real real people as patients, you know, to learn, like how how would the students from other country communicate with like I mean. Which language would they use to communicate with the patients? Okay, I think it's the same for Myanmar. So in Indonesia, most of the university in Indonesia, uh, they have a edu education education hospital. Yeah. So there are some hospital who collaborate in the university to become a place to medical student learn. So there's not all in hospital but just the, the hospital who collaborate in university so when patient come to the hospital the patient know that that they are not just a patient but they are is a subject to learn to you know so in informed consent you know uh, there are uh, there are uh, notes that they are not just a passion, but the subject for education. So it's, it's I think it's uh, easier to medical student in Indonesia to learn from a human. Before, uh, yeah, human. So I think it's uh, like in Myanmar, but not, not, uh, not for all hospital in Indonesia. And for and for the international students, I think it's it's challenge for for them to to speaking with Indonesian people because you know in most of Indonesian people cannot speak cannot speak English well just in uh, some regions like Bali, Jakarta or Manado we can speak uh, maybe we can understand about English but uh, most of regions in Indonesia still use Bahasa in 
when they're speaking. So I think it's a problem and it's a challenge for the student from international. They must they must understand, they must can speak English. And maybe in 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 Indonesia, the medical student will will practice will uh, will practice in human, not in five or two thousand in school, but maybe it's uh, fifth or sixth six a uh, year uh, they can they can practice in human in first till fourth years they just they just um, learn in in university as you know uh, the theory the practice in 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 doll or mannequin you know before they practice out they practice their uh, ability to the human in fifth or sixth years so I think uh, in five or six years they must uh, have to ability to speaking in Bahasa in the hospital, you know. I see. Well, since um, our time is running out, I have one last question to both of you. Uh, what is your opinion on your healthcare, a country's healthcare system? I think the healthcare system in Indonesia is already compatible with the people of this country. Yeah? This is because the principle of Gotong Royong, which is means helping each other, is in accordance with the background of this country, Indonesia. So the exciting healthcare system is also able to provide equal to healthcare service for all regions of Indonesia. Okay, it's my opinion. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so it's a very broad question, but I, I would say my opinion is that, um, especially based on my experience, I would say um, there are a lot of rooms for improvement in our medical society. Um, um, but I think uh, one of the first things that needs to be done is, um, is the funding from the government. So we are really lack in funding. So it's also a very big problem. And one good thing is that here, like uh, patient, doctors and patient relationship is really good, really mutual. So in, in that way, uh, so, so yeah, um, maybe some countries might not know that, but the basic salary in our country from the government hospital is um, it's only around like $200 in a month. So it's very little, but we still have other chances like learning from the patients and we, you know, um, directly or indirectly, we also have some um, respects from the patients. So in that way, you know, doctors are happy to work for the patients there, even though it's, you know, it's for free, uh, even though like the salary is really low. So that's one thing, but I think more more funding would be required because here, like you know, um, doctors is already uh, really good in studying. You know, they can really study well. They can go to other countries, study, and then bring back the trainings. But they don't have money. They need you know they need funding. So I think that's also one thing, um, and also that yeah, I think. Um, from my opinions, the the healthcare system really depends on the economy of the people as well. So I think, you know, to improve the the healthcare system, we have to like we have to improve other sectors as well, especially the economic and the politics fields. So that's my opinion. Yeah, that's what I believe too. So uh, yeah, the economy sector needs to be booming in order for the healthcare system to improve as well, right? Do you guys have any other question to each other? Yeah, I, I like one thing I'm curious is that Indonesia is composed of a lot of islands, right? So, so I think I, 
maybe maybe it's not true, but I think that for some procedures, for some like big procedures, um, some people from some rural areas have must have to travel to the big cities for the procedures, right? So like in that way, like how do they go there by like by flight or by like by boat? I think the transportation is must also cost a lot for the patient. So okay, oh. uh, it's okay. Uh, I know. I, I think I tell you about Puskesmas, the co community center, community health center in every region. So if uh, if the doctor uh, think the patient no need to go to the uh, health service, the other health service, they will be uh, give treatment for the people in this island, maybe in this puskesmas or community health center. But if the doctor think the patient needs to go to the hospital, so they will uh, they will send the patient maybe with boat. If if the island is near, uh, near to the city, but if it's so far, uh, it's it will use the plane. But the most the most transportation uh, we use boat. If the island is so so small, you know, mm. boat to the city. Yeah. It's the most transportation, and maybe I will uh I will. Uh, give I will tell you something about uh, our another innovation. So in Indonesia uh, now uh, we we focus on promotive and preventive uh, medicine. You know because uh, the trend the trend uh, current disease pattern is more directed to degenerative disease in Indonesia. So. The long-term goal of this strategy is to minimize the cost of treatment for degenerative diseases in future. Now, for the economy, these are all implemented and applied through uh, Puskesmas or community health center in each sub-district through promotional and preventive activity. And so uh, with this program, we hope we can minimize the cost of disease in 10 or 20 years. Yeah. Is it in Myanmar same in Indonesia? Like focus on primitive and promotive and preventive medicine? I think for the yeah, yeah, for the preventive part, I'm um, um I think we also have to rely on NGOs. We have many NGOs here, like uh for example, NGOs for example, my NGO. The NGO that I'm working, it's also focusing on um, HIV prevention and malaria prevention and TB prevention as well. So, to conduct the the prevent the prevention in the underground, uh, uh, um, yep, the healthcare system in our country have to has to rely on NGOs. But in from the government points of view, I think there are not I mean, there are some, but they still have to rely on NGOs. Oh, so I would say they have to like work together, um, to, uh, together for the prevention part. But yeah, there. But I think there are still like a lot of um, things to be done to improve the the preventive medicine. I would say yeah, it, yeah it, because it, um, you know, within one hour, it's, it's not it's not easy to like talk about everything. You know. Yeah. So so I'm like. <laughs> I know um, it's not, it's, you know, but I, 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 if you're interested, I would suggest you go to internet and then like, find some interesting articles about the you know, healthcare okay. system as well. Yeah. Maybe after this meeting, we can be a friend from the other country. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting you are the HSV uh, concern in your country. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think our time is up. Um, I would okay. like to thank you guys for sharing your extensive knowledge uh, on pet care and thank you for your precious time. Yeah, thank, thank you too. <laughs> thank you, Ling and Dr. Israel. Yeah, yeah, thank you.
it is really nice to meet you both.